Hi, this is Mike. Welcome back to the Moodle programming series. The goal of this series is to develop a custom Moodle block. This session is simply another step in that process. And in, in this session, we, we are going to cover HTTP GET and how, you know, how it's used. And also just some real basic on how to connect to a database. So let's start with the database. Connecting to a database with MySQL is real easy. There's, you simply need two functions. And you know there's variations, but these are the two basic fun functions. MySQL under, underscore connect. Then you want to list the, the server that you want to connect to. And if you're on the server that you want to connect to, then you just type in localhost. The user, the MySQL user that you want to use. In this case, we're since we already have Moodle installed and a database installed, we'll go ahead and use the Moodle user. We'll go ahead and query against the Moodle database. And so we'll, get, we'll just go ahead and use the Moodle user. And then your password is the is the final parameter that goes into this the MySQL underscore connect function. It'll return a connection, and with that connection, you'll use the MySQL underscore select underscore db function. You'll the first uh, parameter is the database that you want to connect to. In this case, it's Moodle, and then comma. And then the connection and that's all there is to it it's just that simple if you if you were connecting from a remote host let's say you had a database server that was completely separate from your web application server then where local host is you would have to you would have to put in the the either the IP address or the fully qualified domain name okay now the next thing we need to do we need to include the connection that we just made and the association with the, the specific database and include that file at the top of this db hyphen layer php file. And really when you do any kind of development, you don't want to embed your SQL in your presentation layer or even your logic layer. You want to have your you want to have those separated. It just makes it much nicer to maintain and reuse is a, is a big deal also. So here we just have one simple function called get courses with a single parameter format. And all we're going to do is select the courses that have a specific format. This is simply for demonstration purposes only. This is not the way you would want to do a production site. You would want to validate your data and also you'd want to make sure that that you use some other command or parameterized parameters to develop your SQL query. And then down here we simply once the query is executed we simply accumulate all of the rows into a into a an array and then we return that array so really i mean in terms of the database stuff i mean it, this is it you have there's a connection and then you have a database later with with dozens of functions that query the database and then return a result set that model is just repeated over and over and over So the, the git part in this, the HTTP git, is a way of passing parameters to the, to, the ser to the server in the URL. With the post, we saw that that's done behind the scenes. With the git, it's, it's the, we'll see in just a second, the, the parameters are listed here. These are links. 
and the way the links are set up is you you specify the file that you want to point to in this case we're pointing to view.php then you use a question mark and then you have your key value pairs list equal courses ampersand which separates the key value pairs and then we have format equals site for the first one and the second one is the same except for the format is equal weeks and the final one is format equal topics this list is simply a dummy field and then on the view very simple this this top section here is something that is a PHP typically on a on a production site you don't want to display any errors so you have the default in the PHP INI file is for display errors off well we want you know when you're debugging a your your programs you want to if there is an error you want to see it on the page you don't have to go hunting in the log files so this is this is a way to overcome the default setting in the on the server and then when when you put this on production you'd want to maybe comment these out or just take them out completely then the next thing we have a couple includes we include the database connection and then we also include the database layer and actually thinking about this I don't, we probably w wouldn't really have needed the DB connection because it's already included in the in the DB layer file but that's okay when the browser uses get to pass fields to the server on the server side they're collected in a another global array once the browser sends the fields in the URL on the server side a dollar sign underscore git array and all the fields will be contained in there here we call the git courses function with the with the parameter that was passed in the URL it'll return an array of courses and then we'll print out the full name and then the course format so let's go ahead and open our browser and here we're on that page these are the links that are referred to in our index .php here's the three three links and then if we click on any one of them Here we here we've printed out the array. There's the list, which is courses, the format, which is topics, and then up here you can actually see that those values are passed actually in the URL. There's the there's the dollar sign or there's the question mark. Then the the key value pairs separated by an ampersand. The purpose of get is just that is to get something from we're passing something from the server to get something back what we're getting back are the courses that sim that are formatted with topics only so if we go back and do weeks do the same thing here we have three courses with course format of weeks and again the courses the courses is just a dummy uh, value for list and then there's format and weeks so this is pretty much this is exactly the same as the other query and the same thing for site so here we just have one that has a site format which is the front page that's really about all there is to say about it. I know this is a really quick example and but there's not too much else to it. 
so that, that'll be it for now. Uh, in our next session, we'll start working on the uh, Moodle blocks. See you later. Bye.